I needed to ventilate the trash can a little. It needed air. <laughs> Getting so far away for her, are you scared? <laughs> Probably gonna blow this out, isn't it? Kaboom! Whistle while you work. Now we're taking off tires today and uh, we're gonna get these cleaned up and ready to paint. So close, Jake. A little bit more. That's it? That's about all she's got. Well, we're out of air. Truck's not running, is it? Okay, so we get her disassembled. 
Um, kind of concerns me a little bit right here on this ring. See that spot where it ain't touching? Something's wrong there. So we're going to have to inspecticate this closely for cracks. And see what in the world's going on there. Man, it's just pockets, maybe. Yeah, it's kind of a long ways for pockets. Got a lot of pockets on the inside. You only got two on the outside, which is ridiculous. I need more pockets on the outside. So we got the wheels off of her. And they're over there, Steve Gerber. Those are spares, man. I can't part with those spares, buddy. <laughs> They've been absolutely invaluable to get us through. But, when I buy some more and I got more spares, then maybe I'll uh, let you have them, just give them to you. Got some uh, stuff going in the old pay dirt box. Got an old Kenny hat going to Spender, Spencer Woeful. Uh, some stuff going to Robert Whitehead. Uh, some extras in there for you, Robert. Uh, David Rose. Got some extra in there for you. And Matthew Marquette's getting an old Kenny coloring book in Kentucky. Thank you for the stuff you send me, Matt. Uh, Jake's also got the wheels on this painted and uh, we're waiting for some wedges to weld on to the new uh, rim pieces that we bought. Let me see if I can show you that. So the new bands that we bought for some reason did not have these wedge lock deals welded on them. So they're sending me some so I can weld them on. But when you've got old wheels and it's wore uh, these down pretty bad and stuff, you need those in there because sometimes you can slip the tire. But we just painted this with cat yellow paint. You just take a paintbrush, dip it straight out of the can, and uh, put it on there. If you give it some time to dry, set up good and hard till your fingernail doesn't dig into it, this stuff will last forever on there as long as you don't put a lot of watery air in there. And we try not to do that. We've got a filter that takes a toilet paper cartridge in it to pull the moisture out of the air. And this is the apron. Um, we really need to do an apron kit on it. I don't know that we're going to have time. we got to get all this work done. So we can go to a job in October. Let me show you what I did on number one. So this was a this was a apron kit I bought from Steel Unlimited, and you can see that weld right there. That's where you cut the old ones off, and that front piece right there is pre bent for you. That's half inch, and I don't think that's an AR. I don't think you can break AR. So that may be like. 100,000 yield steel there and then on the inside you weld L-shaped bent pieces and so you form a framework just like the outside of your bowl and then where these two pieces come together you sandwich a one inch thick I think one by two piece of AR bar in there and that goes down to the cutting edge and that's what chops things off and shuts the door and then this one also too I got an arm kit for it and totally replaced the arms and uh, if I did it again uh, I don't know if they make the whole apron assembly or not but I would rather pay them to do all this than me but I'm not sure that they do the complete apron they might so the filthy horror is getting the mud washed off of it since they wouldn't let us
clean it off on the job, which makes no sense. It was their contamination. Why do I have to bring it home and clean it off? But that's the government. So she's pulling uh, that apron ball out again. And here's the reason why. So that ejector has like a half inch thick plate welded to it all the way to the bottom. And then it has, uh, I'm going to guess, 3 8 half inch AR plate welded to it to scrape the sides. Well, it's too thick. And so you see the hole in it um, up there. That's where it hits the bolts and the, and the blocks on the apron. So that's what's tearing that out of there, is the ejector is hitting those. And if you remember when I took it apart, the bolts were just trash. The heads were just wore right off of them from the ejector hitting them. So it needs to be fixed right, and then we won't have any more trouble with it. So we'll, we'll probably end up cutting out the liner out of the can. Uh... There's a lot of open places in there in the sides that they have cut out the original skin. And you've, you've got to replace that before you put a liner back over it. So that's the plan with her is to fix that and fix it right. And then we've got number one cleaned up. And uh, so what i got to do with it is come in here and uh, we'll unhook the rod from the door, retract the rod cylinder, uh, unhook the lines, get the oil out of it, disconnect it in the back, and then you set that cylinder down on that axle tube. And then you get a hold of it with a crane and a strap and you slide it forward out here and then hook onto it and pull it up out of here. So this needs re-chromed. It's got some bad spots in it. And then uh, I'm going to start modifying heads to take uh, the newer style seal. And then that should stop our leaking problem. And then while we're at it, got to reseal the speed change valve on it. Replace all the O-rings in it. It seems to be leaking. Matter of fact, it's dribbling right now. So, and it's coming out of this O-ring under that short pipe right there. So anyway, I this ram hasn't been out since, oh my gosh, before 2007. It was probably 2005, 6, somewhere in there is the last time that rod came out and it got gone clear through so it's had a pretty good service life so one of the other things i'd really like to do is line bore that right there It'd probably be easier to just cut the whole bracket off and go have it uh line board back to size and do the same with the back one they get kind of sloppy eh? after 50 years 45 whatever so after we get that done, got one more project. That's right. <laughs> got to do the hitch cylinder in this one. And that bottom hole right there got bored probably 20 years ago by my cat dealer. And uh, bored the hole crooked. And uh, so... It's having a hard time holding steel because it goes inside of a tapered bushing. And uh, since it's not straight with the front one, it puts a hell of a bind on things. So if we have time, we'll just pull the tree out and pull the main hitch out and line bore that hole and straighten it up. And then those uh, two top holes up there are really crooked they're so crooked i couldn't get the the brass thrust washer in them i had to put old used wore out ones in it and the reason is is 
uh, my cat dealer way back in the 80s, I had him come and, and oversize those top holes. And uh, the guy bored him crooked. And it puts a, quite a strain on the hitch and that rod eye on the cushion hitch cylinder. So I'm hoping now they got somebody that can run a boring bar. I used to use a, a guy down in Pocatello, but he's retired. He was super good. And uh, at the time, I just absolutely regretted using my dealer to do that because the people they had running the bar were obviously not skilled and qualified enough to do it. So this time I'm hoping I can get somebody that knows what they're doing to straighten them up and make things work. So I want to show you what we're going to do to the ejector cylinders on the scrapers to seal them up. So this is a, a D cylinder, D model. And they used to have packing in here, and now they have a U-cup with a spacer. And then that's all you have, and they tend to leak. Uh, it's not a real good system. So this is a, a later Model D. And so what they've done here is they've put a U-cup type seal in here and a narrow groove. And these work, and they work well. And then they got rid of the bolt-on deal that holds your wiper. This is a snap-in. Uh, I don't know if it has a snap ring on it. It probably doesn't. You probably have to pull the whole assembly off to replace that, which is fine. And then you've got your head wearing right here. And so I have got, I have bought me another head, a used one. And we're going to take that to the machine shop and have them modify it to put this in. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to put a buffer seal in here if I can do it. But this is pretty darn wide, so I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough space in here to do that. Uh, I may end up just doing this type seal, and I'm pretty sure that would fix it. But I would love to have the double seals in here. The other one is a, a buffer seal with a backup ring on it. Um, and if I can make that work, that's what I'm going to do. Hey, you got some goodies in the pay dirt box. Here comes the mailman, clear full. Uh, got some stuff going to John Samarpi from Wells Somerset in the UK. Evan Good from Putnam, Ontario, Canada. Timothy Ash from Chillicoot, California. Andrew Thomas from Houston, Texas. Brian Wills from Lenexa, Kansas. Darcy Picard from Lytton, Iowa. And uh, David Goodrich, I'm sending him an elbow for his switchblade turbo conversion. So let me know how that turns out, David. So I got a lot of packages I've been opening this morning. Uh, this one's from Tommy Britton out of Fork River, New Jersey. And uh, he sent me a cool belt buckle with a cat dozer koozie. Uh, some magazines, a letter. Thank you for that letter and the information, Tommy. And a cool old D, uh, D2 parts book you found in his grandma's garage. I guess the tractor's gone, he says, but the memories are still there. But funny thing is, Tommy, is you wrote, do not bend on here. And I'm not kidding you. The post office took that as a challenge and they literally just bent a crap out of it. And then I got one from a guy out of Ohio, Garth Button from Hubbard, Ohio. And he didn't write Don't Bend on His, and it's virgin, it's perfect. But he sent me a letter and a donation to Shane. Thank you very much for that, Garth. Along with the last edition of the Youngstown Vindicator. So this paper's gone out of business. This was the last edition on Saturday, August 31st. 2019, 100 and, good heck, what, how many years was that? 100 and some years. Anyway, this is the original staff, and then this is the current one. That's sad. I don't know, why are papers going out of business? Can young people not read? <laughs> they just like pictures. I don't know. And then this guy from Australia sent me this. Sent me a hat and a letter. Thank you very much for that. 
Uh, this is Scott Mitchell out of Tasmania and some uh, uh, an Australian edition of the Machinery Trader and truckworld.com. Thank you for that, guys. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Whiteboard, where I get to talk about some of my awesome subscribers. So anyway, I've been uh, tearing apart scrapers. I'm going to be showing you that. So let's start talking about some of my awesome subscribers. I want to start out with Mike Jordan. He's from Iowa Park, Texas, and he's got a welding and machinist business in Iowa Park. Um, Mike Jordan, Jordan Welding and Machine, 110 North Bell Road, Iowa Park, Texas, 76367, phone 940 592-9756. Uh, Nick Campbell, he's from Casper, Wyoming, just over across the border. Thank you for subscribing, Nick. Uh, Mike Allen, he's from Hancock, Maine. Thank you, Mike. And Eric Ammons, he's from Leesburg, Georgia. Uh, Eric has a heavy equipment repair service, got his own service truck. Uh, so thank you for subscribing, Eric, that's cool. Uh, Warren Jones, he's from Sutton, New Hampshire. Thank you, Warren. Uh, Bruce Wilson from Skellytown, Texas. Thank you, Bruce. And Mark Cat, all the way from Manhattan, New York. Thank you for subscribing, guys. You can get your uh, Old Kenny coloring book uh, in the link below. want to mention, every video I post, I pin my own comment at the top. Uh, click on the Read More button on that comment. It has the link to Amazon to get this. This is only $7.50. Money does not go to me. It goes to another deserving person. Uh, if you want some swag, if you notice, to get some new hats, let me show you a picture of all the new hats I got. So I've got the black with the yellow. I got the charcoal and black, black on black. I got the flex fit hat and I got the Anderson hat. So, uh, oh, also the old Kenny hat too. So anyway, I don't have the new hats in the store yet. I will get those in as soon as I can. So check back for those. That's www.jpaydirt.com. Got a lot of calendars left if you'd like some of those. Uh, so anyway, uh, glad you've been enjoying the videos I've been uploading. Thank you for supporting my store and thank you for supporting Shane and your donations that you give. He really appreciates that. Thank you. I think it's gonna be a twister, I am. I got all this yeller cat heavy equipment that are parked around the shop here. So as I can uh, avoid any storm. Oh wait, I'm supposed to stop talking like a farmer. I don't know where that guy got the idea that that's farmer talk. I don't get it. I get some shit sometimes for that stuff. I don't I don't understand it. But anyway, this is the first heavy rain we've seen since spring. Kind of a welcome thing. I kind of enjoy it. 